uh, we'll, we'll get started. I just wanted to, uh, first of all, thank everyone for coming in tonight. Uh, Hockey New South Wales Education Week has been um, a really great success so far. One more day to go, three more sessions. But um, what it's been about is the volunteers. So the volunteers that are in this call tonight, um, even though there's only a small group tonight, these sessions are recorded and we've got an info hub up on our website where everyone will be able to go and see them later on or check in around something that may have interested them. So thank you to the volunteers that have got on board uh, Education Week and uh, hopefully we've been able to help you. Tonight's um, all about advancing along the athlete pathway. So hopefully um, our two special guests will be able to uh, really give us some insight into the, the Hockey New South Wales pathway all the way to being a hockey roo and a, and a kookaburra. Just a reminder that um, I'm also recording this um, workshop. So if you don't want your face on, that's okay but just to be aware that we are, are recording it. We'll also um, take any uh, questions over the chat function during the night if you'd like, but there will be a chance to do face-to-face -face questions, especially with our, our two invited, um, invited guests. With that, I'd like to introduce our guest. First of all, Dylan Martin, um, new Kookaburra, recently selected into the Kookaburra squad in 2021, and we'll learn a little bit more about him as we go along. And also Kate Jenner, uh, formerly of Tamworth and um, a current hockey roo, uh, putting her best foot forward to hopefully get to Tokyo if the games can go ahead. Um, the, both of these two athletes are sitting in Perth. I know KJ's in the gym and I think Dylan's at home, but uh, to take time out of their, their busy schedules or their preparation schedules, we at Hockey New South Wales really appreciate, appreciate that. So Dylan and KJ, Really appreciate you coming on board. Uh, for everyone that doesn't realise, it's only four o'clock over in Perth. It's not seven o'clock. So there's plenty of sun still up over in the west. So we might do a sound check and just an uh, a say good day. So Dylan, um, thanks for having us coming along tonight. Yeah, no worries. Thank you definitely for having me. Um, just want to say hello to everyone. I hope you get a lot out of this session. Kate, um, you missed out on Regional Challenge last week uh, weekend. Um, it's great to have you on board again tonight helping Hockey New South Wales. Yeah, it seems to uh, I've missed out two years in a row now. So this, this timing has worked out quite well uh, for, the, for the heavy lifting. Excellent. I will share my screen now so that we can um, have a presentation. So hopefully uh, KJ might let me know when that's um, come up yep. there for me. Yep. It's all there. Just need to admit a couple more people. So um, Education Week, and as I mentioned, advancing along the athlete pathway and a guide to Hockey New South Wales player pathway. So we'll um, just uh, have a quick introduction. For those people that don't know who I am, I'm the pathway manager for Hockey New South Wales. So my role is to supervise athletes as they transition along the pathway, as, as well as coaches. So starting from under 13s right through to being a Kookaburra Hockey Roo, uh, it's part of my role. Uh, as I've already introduced, we've got Kate and Dylan and Paul um, Schofield will probably join us very shortly. Again, he's on the pitch tonight doing some coaching and he'll be operating the chat function for us. First uh, part of the session will be just outlining the Hockey New South Wales pathway and what it does look like and a little bit of information around the different parts on that pathway. We're then going to do a really relaxed informal Q&A with KJ and Dylan. We'll then visit the Hockey New South Wales website and just look at the performance page there. Uh, and then that'll be your cue to um, Think about any questions you'd like to ask Dylan and Kate around their journeys or something that you might like to know about the Hockey New South Wales pathway. And finally, we'll finish with a new document that we've released around culture uh, and something to do with our pride teams. So the player pathway, and we've broken our pathway into two, into field and to indoor. So most people may have seen this document or they may have not. We have in New South Wales what we call a single athlete pathway where players generally fall into one category 
they're in that category. But if they perform well or develop well, they can step into the next age group or the next program. So we have a look at under nines. This is where all our development programs are, hook into hockey, school competitions, and then our under 12 pride clinics. As an under 11 athlete, we then go into primary school sport, association representative teams where they go to the Kim Small Shield and York Cup. There's lots of stick to hockey programs, which are a modified program across New South Wales. And we also have our under 11 clinics. Under 13 is where our first New South Wales teams are selected and they go off to a non-competitive carnival. Uh, we do select state squads and teams. Associations generally have representative teams. And the big one there for me is it's the start of the Centre of Development, the Hockey New South Wales Pathway Program. Moving into under 15s, again, we select athletes to go to the national championships. This year, the New South Wales 15s uh, in Bathurst, so the athletes get to play in their home state. Again, we select um, squads and teams, and this is where they also go to a state championship. So we have a state championships where they get to represent their Wagga region or their Tamworth region or wherever they come from. Also, Centre of Development has two age groups, and then the under-15 program is very important to us as well. Then we start to get into a little bit more of a high performance area once you st start to turn under 18. Again, we have a national championship, but there's more programs for the athletes. If you look there, there's an AAP program, there's an academy program, and there's also sports high schools and school competitions. Finally, as we move into open age athletes, we have the national squad, the national development squad, hockey one, junior squad, the New South Wales Institute of Sport, National Under-21 Championships. So there's a lot happening for an athlete that's over 18 and in the open age category. Also, we have our indoor pathway. We at Hockey New South Wales have a very strong heritage in indoor and we have a pathway very similar to field pathway, but that document highlights the different programs or teams or championships that different people can attend depending on what age they are. So most, as for our first taste of national competition or, or an indoor state championship starts at under 13 and we go all the way through to the open age and Australia do represent at the World Cup of indoor hockey and um, that's in an open age category. So very similar to our, our field pathway, but it's definitely um, runs in correlation with our outdoor pathway. So if we then move on to some of the programs that we just spoke about, which I just want to touch base with, Hockey New South Wales have a variety of programs. Most people in the call tonight would have seen that the regional challenge was held in Tamworth last weekend. It's the culmination of our centre of development. Centre of development is our summer development program for athletes that are under 12, under 13, under 14 and under 15 over the summer months to prepare their hockey for the next season and also to be a program for the high performance athletes that are striving to play for New South Wales. As you can see there, we have a range of regions. We have 11 regions that range in Wagga in the south, Riverina Heat to the Northern Storm in the northern part of the state. Most of the, uh, one of the most important things around regional challenge and COD is that it's a non-competitive competitive program. All it is is about athlete development, not about selection. So it's a really bonus for us at Hockey New South Wales to allow athletes to develop at their own rate. Also, there's the regional academies of sport, which sit under AAP. These academies. Uh, are all over New South Wales and most regions have an academy program even in the metropolitan area where the Sydney Metro Academy services those athletes. That's for athletes that are 16 to 18 years of age. So just wanted to talk a bit about what we select. As I mentioned in the pathway, Hockey New South Wales selects state teams and send them away to national championships in all age groups. One thing that's been really successful for us at Hockey New South Wales is that we don't just select one team in each age group. We select two teams and our second team are called the Blues and our Blues teams are continuing 
to be very successful, both in athlete development, the way they play the game, and even the success they're having at national championships. So it's probably one of the most exciting things. Not every state around Australia has a Blues program. And so we at Oxford New South Wales are now sending away double the amount of athletes to what we have in the past. We also have our AAP program, which is our program for our under 18 elite athletes. That's 140 athletes, 70 males and 70 females training 12 months of the year in focusing on their development. Hopefully then they may be selected to go into the New South Wales Institute of Sport, which then services athletes from 18 to older age as they head towards the Pride team or the Hockey Roos and Kookaburras. The Pride is the Hockey New South Wales franchise that perform in the Hockey One team. Both Dylan and Kate have been members of the Hockey One or the Pride team. Finally, um, and one of the reasons that we brought in our two guest um, speakers tonight, we then have our national teams, the Hockey Roos and the Kookaburras, that we hope all of our athletes aspire to be part of. So that's sort of um, just a bit of a snapshot of the Hockey New South Wales pathway and what it looks like. Um, we will then move on to um, what... Um, what we um, have come tonight is that's to ask Dylan and KJ all the questions. So first of all, I'd like to introduce Dylan Martin. Uh, Dylan debuted for his the Waratahs in 2018 uh, with AHL. So I think that was the first senior match for Dylan. And one of his claims to fame is winning a gold medal for New South Wales at the National Under-21 Championship, so in Lismore, and I'm pretty sure that's still fresh in Dylan's mind. He has the number 14 in the um, Kookaburra squad, and finally in 2021, he reached the Kookaburra team, uh, Kookaburra squad, uh, but he's yet to make his debut, and we look forward to that uh, that day. And that's a pretty good picture with uh, the determination on Dylan's <coughs> face. We'll move on to uh, Kate Jenner, or KJ as she's known. Uh, KJ, uh, has 127 caps for Australia. She attended the 2012 Olympics. She wears the number 22 on her back. I believe she scored one goal for Australia. So that's pretty exciting. Um, and also a gold medal at the Commonwealth, Commonwealth Games in 2014, where I think she might have missed a shootout. I'm not sure whether she missed a shootout in that game. Um, hails from Mudgee in New South Wales but learned her hockey trade in Tamworth. So with that, we'll move on to some questions and it's great to hear from these two people. So we, we might start with you, Dylan. Where did you first play your hockey? And uh, tell us a little about, bit about how you got into the game. Yeah, so as Richard mentioned, I'm, I'm from Wagga Wagga. Um, I grew up playing hockey with a family. So I would have started very, very young. Um, my, my family played, parents played. So that's how I sort of got into it. Um, and obviously just sort of fell in love with the game to start off with. Um, probably around the whole association experience, obviously, because it's coming from a regional town, it was was playing for Wagga. Um, I think I played my first time for Wagga when I was 11 or 12. Um, and just sort of from there, just sort of kept playing the age groups and it, it became, you know, a really thing I really enjoyed. Um, yeah, I think it would have been the same with KJ growing up in Tama. So Dylan, was uh, who gave you your first hockey stick? Dad? Dad? Yeah, I think I've got a couple of older brothers. Um, yeah, that, that would have been the same, putting them and playing cricket with those boys. So that would have roughed me up a fair bit as a young young boy, a lot older than I am. So it <laughs> would have been the same with that um, hockey and cricket. Very good. And lots of matches in the front yard, or did you uh, have a synthetic pitch all the time in Wagga? Uh, no, I grew up. Uh, playing a bit, fair bit of grass hockey. Um, I think when I was around 12, we got our first water base. Um, so I was very lucky. This Wagga is very lucky to get a water base, a career water base, especially for me at such a young age. So I played a lot of hockey on water base really young, which is really, really good. I think for someone at such a young age. So, Kay Jenner, um, where did you first play hockey? Who gave you your first stick? How did you get involved? Um, yeah, well, I first played hockey in Tamworth. Um I was around seven or eight um, and I don't come from a hockey family. So my family 
knows nothing about hockey, still doesn't. Uh, my sister's played a little bit, but outside of that, um, yeah, they're very much newbies to hockey. Um, and I became involved uh, when one of my friends at school asked if I wanted to play in her mum's side because they were down a player. So um, I played basically every sport uh, under the sun when I was younger. So hockey just became another one. Um, and yeah, it's, it's the one that I enjoyed the most and, and stuck with in the end. So um, yeah, I think one of the stories from my first season when we played on grass back in the old minky format was um, we were winning by a ton of goals and the other team got a breakaway um, and I kind of chased after and dove and um, yeah, saved the ball off the line um, to keep that team to uh, zero goals. I think we were about oh, maybe 10 nil up or something. They were about to score their first goal. And um, yeah, I, I think um, my parents might've been a little bit uh, embarrassed on the sideline because everyone was cheering for this person to score and I've um, ran them down and saved the goal. Um, so I've you learned were, a lot, so yeah, you I've learned a lot born, about sportsmanship, sportsmanship since um, then. You, you were born a defender by the sounds of that. Yeah, yeah, very competitive, yes. Very good. So let's move on to our association or teams. Um, Dylan, do you have a team that you remember when you were young, uh, as KJ mentioned? Was it a school team? Was it a Wagga team? Uh, I, I first started playing, obviously, when we went through, played Minky. Um, I played Cavaliers Hockey Club, so that was my first club in Wagga. This is pretty much my only club in Wagga. Um, they were a very good community club, and then I ended up, yeah, playing playing for Wagga and the, the rep sort of stuff. Um, and that, that was pretty much all my junior years, all the way up to about 16. So, so yeah. can, I, can I ask a question? Did Wagga ever play in Lismore when you were young? Did Wagga ever play in Lismore? Uh, no, I don't think so. Because that's, that, that's a bus ride and a half. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of distance. I think the problem with uh, where Wagga being, it's where it is, it's such a tough, tough gig to get around to different places around the state. Um, so anything sort of beyond Sydney was very hard for Wagga to get to. So we're very fortunate to get, get some opportunities and play play tournaments and stuff and state champs south south of Sydney or in Sydney. Excellent. KJ, um, one of your first association or teams that you remember or an, an experience? Um, yeah, I think I've, yeah, any time I've played for Tamworth, I've really enjoyed it. Um, my first experience, I think I was 11 playing an under 12s team. Um, and I think it was purely because they needed players. Um, and I remember having... Um, one of my friends at the time who was in the team, her older sister actually looking after us when we went away on a big bus together and um, cause we were the young ones. So yeah, I did have a fair bit of experience being the young one kind of, yeah, pulled into line by the older ones, but um, at the same time, they kind of showed you the way and um, looked after you as well. So yeah, anytime I played with Tenworth, um, yeah, I have great memories. Excellent. So we might move on to, um, the pathways, you've heard me speak about the, the New South Wales pathway. Obviously, it's changed or it's continually changing. Um, could you tell us how you developed and what sort of programs you were in as you grew along the pathway? Do you, do you want to go first, KJ, this time? Uh, yep. Um, yeah, well, I'm obviously a bit more ancient than um, Dylan, so we didn't have COD and AAP back in the day. We did have NIAS, so NIAS was one of my first kind of I guess, big programs that I did that was outside of um, your local competition. Um, so we got to meet, uh, you know, people from mainly Armadale um, in hockey. They were the other big uh, hockey players in that area. So um, that was probably your first introduction to, yeah, I guess everything that goes into hockey, not just the playing and, you know, having a good time, but stuff that comes off the field. Like, you know, how do you get fit for a season? How do you prepare for a season? Um, the nutrition side of it, uh, public speaking. Um, yeah, it was kind of like the full experience. And I guess the first time it was really, really serious. Whereas before that, you know, it's, it's just fun um, knocking about town and, you know, playing hockey. And then, you know, it was kind of a bit of an eye opener um, to all those other things that um, I guess make a elite hockey player. Yeah, I'd like to sort of add that the NICE program and all the academy programs, they're off pitch professional program are excellent and I'd encourage anybody to be involved um, because of the off-pitch activity, not just the hockey the hockey activity. Dylan, your journey and your program? Yeah, so when I was younger, uh, this was just, just before 
caught in the AOP started till I was about 15. Um, just went to the generic state champs. Um, but then when I was about 16, I think AOP started. Um, and this was such a, a good program for someone like me who was, you know, I, I trained a lot by myself. I didn't really have a lot of people to work with. I never really had coaches at a, at a very quality level. Um, I think my father, he helped me out. My dad helped me out a fair bit with my hockey. Um, yeah, so the AOP really got me into, I guess, a d- different environment and I could get good coaches. Um, I had a guy, Andy Van Pelt, he came down to Wagga a lot and he did a lot of work with me. I, was, I think I was very fortunate to get a lot of one-on-one stuff with him. Um, and I think that's helped a lot today. But like The program really helped me to get, I guess, where I am now um, and probably helped me accelerate a fair bit from that age group, about 16. So, Dylan, the camp scenarios of AAP, um, do you claim a lot of your development when you came to Sydney, not necessarily in Wagga as well? Yeah, yeah, I was just about to get to that bit. So pretty much, like, it was such a good opportunity. I, I come with, uh, I get to go and train with a lot of people outside of Wagga. You know, I can come into a big group. I have a, a good weekend where I don't have to keep travelling back and forth. I can get a good weekend of development to learn and then I can take that back into my, my home environment and try and learn from that as well. So those big, those big block trainings or the weekend camps are really good. Excellent. Sorry to jump in on you. KJ, we'll go on to another question. Um, and uh, with every good athlete, they always need to have a good coach or a mentor, same as coaches, they need their mentors. Is there anyone, um, you're obviously in the Hockey Root program now with some quality coaching, but anyone that's helped you along on your journey and, and the value probably of what a coach brings to an athlete? Um, yeah, I think I've had a lot of coaches over my time um, and I think I've been able to take something away from every coach that, that I've had and um, it's something that I dislike when people say, oh, they're a terrible coach or I've learnt nothing from them because um, I think even, you know, some coaches, they just taught you to have fun away from the field. Um, that was their main emphasis and, um, you know, so I think whatever coach you have, you can always take something away but... For me, um, one of the people that helped me the most, um, which a lot of people would know, is Greg Doolan. Um, so he, he ran a bit of a program in, uh, in Tamworth. Um, and luckily enough, I had some friends that were kind of on the pathway as well. So it was kind of a good chance to work hard, but also hang out with your friends. Um, and yeah, and then leading on from there, I guess, um, yeah, I've stayed in touch with Dulo. Um, basically, we do work together now. Um, but also, yeah, on a friend level as well, he's always someone that I can pick up the phone and have a chat to. And, um, yeah, I guess he, he keeps you fairly grounded as well, um, which is good. So, um, yeah, he's a quality person and always, yeah, happy to have a chat about anything that's happening, um, even if it's not hockey-related. Excellent. Dylan, um a mentor coach or an influence of N-Swiss or something along those lines? Yeah, I, th- I think that I'm a little bit same with KJ that, you know, you can always learn from different people. Um, I probably say my whole, my whole career so far is there's always been different people at different stages that have helped a lot. Um, but I think there's a, a lot of people that aren't as seen as a coach that might, you know, put a lot of effort into a lot of things that might help, like say yourself, Rich, you know, you sort of help with this AAP sort of stuff. That That's really helped me as well as, you know, the coach that's on the field as well. So I think it's obviously, you know, I think different point at the times, uh, but I think there's a lot of people behind the scenes that do a lot for me as well. And definitely my my family have been the one that have sort of helped me a bit outside of the hockey things. You know, they're always going to be there to support you no matter what you do. Um, so they're always, they're always a good one as well. Great answers, guys. We might... Um... We might move on. Um, I'm just trying to get my slideshow to move just so that we can um, upsell the brand a little bit. So KJ's eyes on the ball there. Um, great picture. And KJ, before we go to the next, what's it like to represent the Kookaburras at the Olymp- at the Hockey Roos at the Olympics? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's an interesting experience. I think a lot of people will tell you, you know what it's going to be like and all of this but when you get there it's a complete different beast it's um yeah everything from you know the big food hall um you know you can't just walk into your kitchen and grab a quick snack you've got to you know plan out your meals to head to the food court or where am I going to go what am I going to eat tonight um 
yeah, to then, you know, living back in shared accommodation. Um, you know, as you get older, you, you start living with less and less people and then all of a sudden you're in a apartment of eight people. Um, so, yeah, and then in the village, yeah, it's it's crazy. It's it's mayhem. There's people everywhere and, um, you know, you've got to have an accredit accreditation pass to get through different checkpoints and, um, yeah, but then playing, um, it's just like a regular game. You've got a you've got a massive crowd, but at the end of the day, once the whistle goes, um, yeah, it's it's a regular game, um, and it's not till you finish the game that then, you know, the whole you know oh we're at an Olympics um, kind of kicks back in again. So um, yeah, it it is a yeah it's a, it's a beast of a <laughs> it's a beast of a thing, um, but yeah, at the end of the day, once the whistle goes, it's just like playing back in your hometown in Tamworth or Wagga Wagga. It's a game of hockey. Um, you get it on and do your job. So very grounded. Dylan, you might tell us a bit about this story, this picture. Um, the men's pride team, the inaugural Hockey One winners. Um, what was it like to be around that and the team and to win the first event? Yeah, I think, you know, um, a, bit of, a bit of history around this, that the, the men's side of things haven't won one, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Rich, I think it was 15 years. Um, it's been a fair while since the boys actually have actually won an, an Opens title. Um, and the last time they won was our coach, Brent Livermore. He was playing. Um, so I think the Chief was running around then. So I think it's just a, a – I think it's very special when you look at it that way. Um, and obviously, you know, to represent your state is obviously something that I've always wanted to do. And it's such, a, such an amazing thing to do, especially going through the whole tournament undefeated and winning like we did. You know, it's something very special to be a part of. Question without notice, have you won other national championships? Uh, I have won a, I think I've won a 15 um, and I've won two 21s. Excellent. Very good. Very good. Thanks, uh... So we'll go, we'll go on to another round of questions. Um, KJ, special moments, hockey moments? Um, yeah, I think for me, probably, yeah, the most special one that you always come back to is your debut. Um, it's the quickest match of hockey you'll ever play. Um, it's... Yeah, I guess your heart, your heart rate's about, you know, 250 the whole time and you're running around like a headless chook. But, um, yeah, luckily you've got people around you to, um, you know, keep you focused. And, um, yeah, I guess it, it's over before you realise that it started. Um, but, yeah, I think just to, yeah, pull on that bodysuit um, is something really special. And, um, yeah, I think I've still got it somewhere. I haven't been allowed to touch any of my uniform. My, my parents keep a pretty tight wrap on that. So um, I'm sure sure my first bodysuit is is somewhere. Um, but, yeah, it's something <laughs> you'll, you'll hold on to forever. So correct me if I'm wrong. You debuted in, on the 16th of June 2010 against Great Britain. Yep. I've done my research, haven't I? You have, you have. Very good. Um, so, Dylan, um, special moment so far. You've obviously been called into the Kookaburra squad at the start of this year. Uh, what's it like over there? Or do you have another special moment? Yeah, I think, look, obviously winning the Pride thing was a was a big special moment. But I think actually getting the call to say that you know, I made the squad was, um, was, a very, it was a big surprise for me. I think, you know, it was, it was a hard year to break into a squad like this, especially in Olympic year. Um, and I wasn't the only change, and I wasn't. My my aim was to try and break into it post the Olympics, um, but I, I guess I was very fortunate to put some good performances in during COVID times and get myself really ready. And then to actually get that call is definitely the most special moment. I think it was also very nice to share it with my mum and dad and family. So that was also probably one of my special hockey moments, even and though that, it was off the pitch. That comes from the coach, does it, Dylan? Yeah. So I, it's actually. I get get a call from Colin Batch, who's the head coach. Um, I reckon he probably spoke to me on the phone for 20 seconds, 30 seconds. He just went and said, hi, mate. I just want to know that you have put some good performances in. Congratulations, you're in. And he said, look, I've got to, I've got to talk to, you know, 36 other people, so I'll talk to you later. Um, and I hung up the phone. I was a little bit shocked. I was, Did I, is, is he serious? Or, you know, so and then, um, you know, sort of settled down a bit and realised it was actually – it's actually a very good goal and then sort of seeing every, everyone getting messages and stuff like that and then to be actually announced was obviously that's probably my hockey special moment. Yeah, there's some great, great memories there for both of you. Um, we might move on and try and give some people on the call tonight some more tips. Um, advice to a young version of you guys coming through on the Hockey New South Wales pathway now. 
what what opportunity do you see or where what would you change from what you you did kj um i don't know that i'd actually change anything from when i was younger um my probably change would be you know once i kind of i guess established myself into the hockey roo squad was to not forget to have fun I think there was probably a few years there where you get so focused on, you know, that you need to improve in this area and that area and I must do this, I must do that. But also being able to step away um, and still have that enjoyment off the field um, because, you know, when you're younger, that's that's what you do and that's why you love the game so much. And I think sometimes you can get caught up, um, yeah, I guess, in the seriousness of it, but you kind of need to step back and, um, yeah, realise, you know, how you were to get yourself to that place um, and not, not yeah, forget that and, and forget that, you know, at the end of the day, hockey's just a game um, and to not take it so seriously all the time. You can't, yeah, you can't be switched on 24-7. I'll remember that because I haven't seen you not be serious very often. Yeah, I, I do have a white line fever. So when I do cross that line, I do get serious. So, um, yeah, every now and then I just need to be held back a bit. <laughs> Dylan, um, advice to a young Dylan Martin growing up at Griffith, not in Wagga. Yeah, well, I, I, I think enjoyment, as KJ said, is definitely one of the biggest ones. Um, you got to enjoy everything you do. But I think one that I would probably like to tell myself was to actually say that I was quite close, to, closer to, you know, this than I thought I was. Um, you know, I played uh, 21s back in 2019 at the start of the year. Um, but I got told when I made this now that, you know, they're looking at me then and they're looking at me pre this. So I think just wherever you're going with it, just keep enjoying it. Keep working hard every time you're on the pitch. Um, and then that, that next step is always closer than you think. We might go to that working hard piece. Would both of you like to sort of put that into perspective for us and maybe talk about your transition from being a country athlete through to N-Swiss and the working hard piece, try and, put that into a little bit more word possibly if you can? Um, yeah, well, I think for me, yeah, working hard was kind of instilled in me from a young age and it's it's probably something a lot of country kids kind of have in them that you work hard for what you want. Um, yeah, so for me, it's, um, and I guess, that yeah, all the coaches I had in, in Tamworth, like I think Dulo had us running like, you know, five laps you know tests every week and I lo loved his fitness and all of that and you know it was always trying to push us to the next level um but then yeah I think you realize once you go to N-Swiss and you know for me coming from Tamworth to Sydney um yeah it's a completely different place um so busy it's you know everyone's all up in your grill all the time it's completely different to yeah, being out in little old Tamworth um so you've got a lot of other challenges like, yeah, to get to training, it's not a quick 10 minute drive down the road. You know, you've got to, you know, get through all the traffic and, um, you know, go shopping yourself once you move out of home, um, feed yourself, do your own washing. You've got to make sure, you know, your uniform's clean, um, this and that. So, yeah, I think at the end of the day, uh, yeah, for me coming from the country and having those values, I guess, instilled for me from a young age, um, yeah, really helped with that transition um, because it's you that has to work hard to, to get to where you want. No one else is going to do it for you. Excellent. Dylan, Wagga to Sydney. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a little bit the same with the outside stuff. My parents are farmers. Um, they're yeah. never slacking around. My father never slacking my father around. So he's, he's, <laughs> he's been a good one. But I think for me, the, I've done – I don't know how many hours I've done down the highway up to Sydney and back. It's been a lot. And I think my parents heaps because, you know, I think of it now, if I had to do that for someone else, it'd be it's a tough thing to do. Um, and I think that that's really what helped me a lot is then support from those guys. Um, and especially when I moved to Sydney, you know, I think there's been a few times so I've been in Sydney that I wasn't quite happy with how I was going or happy living there. And, you know, it's nice to have someone that I could just quickly go back, go back for the weekend, see the family or they could come up. Um, and that, yeah, I think definitely from transition from a country to the city was obviously hard, you, you know, no, no one really got to go from a small town to a big city. And I lived out in the east suburbs of Sydney. So that was obviously a big shock compared to 
little wagger. Um, but yeah, I think it, that's that's about it, really. I think my parents are the big big helper for me there. Question without notice, then: What's the difference to moving to Perth to the uh, to the uh, Australian environments? Uh, I, oh, go, sorry. Jill. No, you go, Jill. Yeah, I think coming from Sydney and Entwist going to the Kookaburras, I think now it's it's more of a main focus as well. Like I've always focused on hockey, but now, now you know, I get a better opportunity at it. Um, I think the training environment's obviously second to none. It's, you know, some of the best in the world, um, and I tr play and train with some of the best in the world. So it's a good opportunity. I think it's a really, really good environment. I'm enjoying it at the moment. Um, and Perth's definitely not not as big as Sydney. So there's no traffic and cruise around pretty easy. Um, the only downside of this, I think, to be the same with KJ is missing family and stuff at home and all your friends that you leave behind. But I think it's a sacrifice that you, both of us would easily do any day for this. KJ, you got anything to offer or you uh, you agree with Dylan? No, 100% agree. It's a pretty laid back place here. Um, so yeah, no traffic. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's a bit like a Newcastle if you had to put a New South Wales uh, town to it. Well, we'll move on and get a little bit of fun before we finish up. It's been really interesting to have your, your thoughts from both of you, but hockey superstitions or traditions that you really um, stick to or you want to let anyone in on? I should have introduced. We'll go, KJ. <laughs> no, nah, Dill, you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't really have a, a lot of superstitions or traditions. Um, I, I, I like to just make sure I've eaten, eaten before. I'm a very cranky person when I'm having, when I don't have a full stomach. Um, I like to be hydrated a lot, and I like to eat pretty well before I play. And then I try not to, I try not. My philosophy is trying to think of superstitions, traditions, because I kind of think you know, that's a way. It's an easy out or playing bad performances or trying to have a no excuse type attitude. It might not always work, but that's how I try to do things. Before we go to you, KJ, Dylan, have you sung the New South Wales winning song? Uh, yeah. Yes, I have sung it. Sung it at the Pride last year. Very good. KJ, superstitions or hockey uh, traditions? Yeah, I, I used to have a lot of superstitions and they were all like really random ones. Like I used to play, I had to chew gum while I played. Um, yeah, and I used to have to hide it a lot because a lot of uh, hockey pitchers do have the rule where you can't chew gum. So I used to have to hide it at the back of my mouth guard, you know, while I did a little inspection and then, you know, just be, I don't know why, maybe I'm just hungry all the time. Maybe, I, yeah, got rid of that one in the end. Um, the other one I had for ages was that I would never undo my hockey shoes. So I always had to stay laced up. Um, and then, yeah, I started rolling my ankles a lot, obviously, because the laces weren't tight. Um, so yeah, I had to get out of that one pretty quick and ne yeah, now I pretty much have none. Um, yeah, they're more of just a distraction than anything. Um, and yeah, a bit like, um, Dylan was saying, you don't want to blame your performance on something. So yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty, um, pretty relaxed now when I play, sometimes I'll, you know, have a nap on the bus on the way to the game. Um, so yeah, I just like to chill out before a game, um, yeah, I don't get into all the, the dancing in the change rooms and all that before a game. I normally just sit in the corner and close my eyes for a bit. Very good. Um, I've learned something. Um, we'll move on, but um, probably not to how do you switch off from hockey and hobbies, but somehow tied to the pathway. Did you play other sports or what's your hobby hobbies now, possibly? Dylan? Yeah, uh, growing up, so I played, I played a bit of Aussie rules growing up from Wagga. Uh, it's a big Aussie rules town. Um, and I played a lot of cricket too. Um, some of my cricket stuff was involved with Victoria because we're really close to the border. Um, so that was another thing that I really enjoyed um, when I was a younger growing up. Um, but I think now and going through my whole hockey career, it's always been, you know, getting out with friends and, and doing other stuff outside of it really helped. And I also think that having, you know, I, I focus a lot really hard on my uni um, or if I'm working, I focus really hard on that. I think that, that helps me get a lot out of playing as well. You know, I don't think I can just focus on hockey. I need to have other things in my life going on. And I think that's how I get the best out of my hockey as well. There's some really great advice there, Dylan. Um, KJ? Um, yeah, for me, as I was saying before, when I was younger, I played 
every sport I could, basically. Um, I played cricket, softball, uh, swimming, touch football, uh, golf. Um, yeah, basically anything that I could. Um, I was, yeah, always outside. Um, yeah, didn't like being inside. Um, I did also play the piano and the flute. Um, so my parents didn't just let me play all sport. Um, I did have to have a balance um, between many other things. So, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a switch off from hockey. Um, I guess now I do have that switch, even though I do work with Hockey New South Wales now, um, I guess there's still that switch from focusing on me and my playing and then into, you know, how you can grow the game and participation and, you know, oh, coaching nice. and um, everything. different things like that. So, yeah, they're the ways I switch off and, yeah, being in Perth, um, you know, you're only a few minutes away from the beach wherever you go. So, um, yeah, lapping up that sunshine while I can as well. So we're nearly finished. I'll go to my last question, but the people in the meeting tonight, if you have a question, get ready to ask it of Kate or Dylan. Um, so we'll go on to the last question, just a snapshot of what a week looks like in your current training environments. Dylan, do you want to go first? Yeah. Uh, so at the moment we have a Monday, Wednesday, uh, Tuesday, Friday morning sessions. Um, and then we have a Monday and Wednesday Arvo session. Um, and there might be one around that. Obviously, outside with hockey as well and where we're at, you know, there's a lot of video stuff that we can do, especially for me that's come into it. Oh, I have no idea, you know, how other teams play. So I'm doing a lot of stuff on um, the big, big names in hockey at the moment, Belgium, um, Holland and Germany and stuff and how the senior, senior guys play. So I'm doing a lot of stuff around that. Um, and we're coming up to a stage in May that we're thinking about going to Darwin for a month to do some, you know, some training up there. Obviously, it's a similar weather to Tokyo. So that's that's something to look at as well. Yeah. Hey, Jay. Um, yeah, so we currently have uh, hockey sessions on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday, um, and then two gym sessions on a Monday and Thursday. Um, and at the moment, we're currently playing the um, WA under-18 boys team. Um, so they're kind of, yeah, the closest we can get to, um, yeah, I guess, competition before it gets out of hand, before the boys get too too fast and too strong for us. Um, so, yeah, we've kind of, yeah, teed up playing them either once or twice a week um, to kind of, yeah, get some competition and some matches because... Yeah, we can't travel at the moment. Um, and then we're similar to the boys looking to go to Darwin at some stage and um, hopefully getting a New Zealand across or um, something like that. It all just depends on, yeah, the borders at the moment. But, um, yeah, we're trying to get as much competition in as possible. Excellent. Yes, we're all um, hoping that the Olympics go ahead and the teams will all be preparing in a different way. Uh, hopefully you've uh, taken a few notes for the New South Wales Under-18 boys when you're playing those and sending them through to um, Ben Brown, coach of the Under-18 boys. But if anyone has a question of Dylan and Kate, um, would you like to – I'll just um, uh, just go to the chat first. If I, I'm just trying to move um, the slide on. So we'll go to question and answers. But before I go on, I just want to sort of read out what Kathy Calacarinas has said there. Dylan and Kate, you are amazing role models for our up-and-coming talent. We are proud of you. So that's from Kathy. And then as we've got a... Um, Thank you. That was from Kathy. And then for selections for New South Wales state teams, the main criteria is having done COD then to the AIS or did COD and participate or not in the academy, however, not doing it this year due to HSC. Now, the main, um, I'll probably just answer that, the main area for selection for all our teams are at New South Wales Championships, not at um, programs. So you go away and you represent Wagga or Tamworth at a state championships and you'll get identified. But if you miss out at the state championship, you can then still be included into those squads via a COD or a Illawarra Academy of Sport. So we don't want to miss anyone on our pathway. And um, so we want as many opportunities. So the first point for selection would be through a state championship. And then if you miss out through a state championship, you then come into, you can come in via COD, AAP or the Illawarra, or an academy program. So I hope that's answered your question, Izzy, but we can also catch up. Does anyone else 
have a question they'd like to unmute and ask or is everyone okay? It's sounding pretty quiet. No one's got a question. If no one's got a question, it's been a really good evening so far. Izzy, have you got another um, question? Sorry, um, do you need to put like your name forward for um, like for selections? Like, no, um, no. you just need to participate. So represent Illawarra South Coast at the state championship. And yep. every athlete that's at that state championship gets viewed by the selection panel in every age group, 13s, 15s and 18s. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Thank you. All good. That was a very good question. Any other questions from anybody? Chaudhry? Uh, yeah, I have a question from Dylan. Uh, my question is that, have you ever uh, like play against uh, any team which you feel like they are better than you, better than your team, or they are very tough? Yeah, I, I've definitely had, had a lot of teams that, you know, that are supposedly better on paper. Um, that you know, I feel that they're better. Um, I think around that, these hockey's a team sport. I think if you're trying to beat teams like that, definitely focus on focus on the team. And you know, normal the time is always about which team puts puts the most out there and puts you know the better effort out there to win. Um, normally gets the result. All right, nice. thanks. Thank you. Have you got another one, Chaudhry? Because that was a really good question because um, team sports, one of those things where you really turn up every game and you don't know who is going to win. It's who puts their best team performance, uh, not individuals, but team. And my other question from both of you, Dylan and Kate, like uh, what do you think who is the best team in skill-wise in hockey? Because I know Australian, they play both style, Asian and European style. Australia is the only team they play both style. But there are like, when you play soccer, they're in North, South American and European style. So in hockey as well, like uh, Asian style and the European style. So Australia, I think the one team they play both style. So what do you think, who, which teams they got the best skill in hockey? Dylan or KJ? Dylan? Yeah, I'll, I'll go first. I think uh, for, for me, not not all about skill. Um, I think the hardest teams that I've played, um, as I've, I've done a lot of practice matches against teams, um, I found uh, playing against a team like Spain and the men, where they just hold the ball the whole time. Um, you know, it's not necessarily they're really effective with it, but they hold the ball the whole time. I think Belgium, they do that a lot as well, but they're a bit more successful with it. Um, but it's, there's nothing worse playing a team that you can't get the ball off. They, you know, they get into a tough situation, they use their skills to get out of it, and they hold the ball. Um, I think that that's probably one of the hardest ones for me. Okay, no worries. Thank you. Thanks so much. KJ, did you want to answer that as well? Have you played against Lucinda Amar? Yeah. Um, yeah, I have to say skillful in terms of carrying the ball would be Argentina um, and yeah especially Ama. she was yeah she's probably one of the only females to have played hockey that um, could actually get a run on the men's side and um, could be competitive I would think her skill and speed um, together and her ball, ball carrying ability um, yeah in her prime was yeah exceptional um, across the board in terms of I guess um, covering all the skills, you know, passing, ball carrying, um, you know, teams like Holland, they have a high, high standard of that um, across the board, um, which, which I think Australia is starting to get better at um, across the board. I think in, in the men's, they're, they're exceptional. Um, and I think the women's is starting to, uh, to make really good gains in that area as well. Um, but yeah, I, I think the most effective teams are the ones that you know, have the highest skill level across the board and not just, you know, one or two that are absolutely amazing in their team. Great question, Chaudhry. Um, Kate Marsh has put a question up on the um, chat function uh, asking about where indoor's not available on the Far North Coast and can't get to a state championship playing for North, Far North Coast. Kate, Dad, Hawking New South Wales the same as field. We have a pickup roster where athletes can put their name forward and be picked up by teams looking for players. 
Um, I would I would suggest that indoor has a, a real good component to develop your skills being an athlete. So I do encourage athletes to do to have some indoor time because it does help their development. Uh, KJ and Dylan, I presume you've both played indoor. Yeah, I've, I've played, I played a fair bit of indoor. Um, and also just on that, uh, the pickup roster, I've been in there a few times as well. So I played, I had to play state chance for Goulburn. I played state chance for Bathurst once and I played a fair bit for the Central Coast as Wagga didn't really have teams. So I think if you can, um, I, I always wanted to do it. Even playing with new teams, making new friends was always really fun as well. I've made it some really good friends that I'm still keeping good connections with it now. So I think going to pickup roster is a good idea. Great advocate there. I hope that answers your question, Kate. Um, I don't have any more questions on the chat. No one else has um, um, stop muted themselves. So we'll move on so we can get finished around an hour. I'll just um, move on to the to the website. Hawks New South Wales website is becoming a much more user-friendly and a place for people to find information around hockey. Um, the performance page is where everything performance-minded is um, placed. All our programs, all our state teams, everything to do with our pathway you would find on performance. So if you go to the drop-down menu and performance, you will find lots of information, this presentation and all different things. Also, I just wanted to touch base with culture. Um, we at Hockey New South Wales are very passionate about our culture, our citizenship. And we've just recently released this document that's on the screen now. This document's been uh, developed by athletes for our athletes. Obviously, pride is in um, is part of what we are. We actually have our pride teams, but we then come up have come up with some acronyms that sit below pride, being professional, resilient, integrity, diversity, and excellence. And we hope that all our players, all our coaches, all our parents, when we're representing New South Wales, will conduct themselves in a pride manner. So that's um, about all I had for tonight. There is just one more question in the chat. No, Kate said, thank you. I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen. And with that, I just um, let everyone know that we have a Education Week hub. If you might've been interested in something else that was on this week and you haven't been able to uh, get called into it, it might've suited, suited your schedule. Um, please check out the Education Info Hub. Even tonight's presentation will be up there tomorrow. Uh, Dylan and Kate will be able to have a look at themselves back and see the wonderful answers that they made. Um, but before we hang up, it would not be remiss of me. Uh, I think Kathy hit, hit it on the head earlier when she mentioned how wonderful KJ and Dylan are as role models for us at Hockey New South Wales now as part of the Hockey Australia program. And for you guys to take your time and spend with us tonight and to help Hockey New South Wales, we really, really appreciate it. So thank you both. All the best for Tokyo. Um, I'm sure everyone here in New South Wales will be cheering you on uh, when you make those teams and you head off over to Tokyo. So thank you. Dylan and Kate, did you have one more thing that you'd like to say? Uh, just probably um, there's a question. Uh, play, I did play for a Shellhaven team in under 13s. Um, I was 13, so Wagga and Shellhaven didn't have enough people they combined. And we did play at Parks and we did win the state champs. So there's a, there was a question that was put up in the group chat there, Richie. Just wanted to give a quick answer to that. Oh, very good. And so, yeah, <laughs> Dylan's been one that's really been a nomad. He's played with lots of association teams and still made it to the top. So it doesn't matter what division or whether you're in the top teams, you can still be identified. So really good message there, Dylan. And thanks for taking your time. KJ, last words from you? Um. No, I think, yeah, just, yeah, have, have fun with, with playing hockey and wherever it's meant to go, it'll go. Um, yeah, and I'm probably the same as Dylan. If, yeah, you have any more questions, reach out and, um, yeah, we're happy to help in any way. Thanks, everybody, and um, enjoy the rest of the 2021 season. It's really starting to ramp up here in New South Wales. So all the best, KJ and Dylan, and thanks for coming in tonight, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>